Here's seven of the absolute cheapest wireless gear I could find for musicians on Temu. We've got a dual wireless microphone system for $72, a wireless XLR adapter for $40, a portable mixer with two wireless mics built into it for $65. We have three separate wireless guitar systems ranging from $12 up to $48, and a wireless MIDI foot switch for only $22. I used some of these at my live gigs recently, and I'm going to share my experience with them and also give you a rundown briefly on how each of them work. These are all going to be wireless products. However, they're not going to apply to in-ear monitors because I'm going to do a separate video about cheap in-ear monitor systems next month. And also at the end of this video, I am going to be doing a giveaway to my subscribers. So be sure to stick around so you can find out how you can win some of this for yourself. Budget-friendly wireless has its place. And I'm also going to give you some tips and tricks if you do use budget and cheap wireless like this at the end of the video. So all of these products can be found on the site Temu. I guess I've been pronouncing it Timu, but after seeing the Super Bowl commercials, it's Temu. So I gotta get used to calling them Temu instead of Timu, but Temu is the sponsor of today's video. So be sure to use the link down below in the description to download the app. And using that link, you can also get a $100 coupon bundle. You can download the app using the link in the description, or you can use my promo code that's on your screen right now, and you will get that $100 coupon bundle. That's enough of the intro. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already, and let's go ahead and get started. First up, we have a dual wireless microphone system for only $72, and this is going to be the highest priced item on the list. I say highest price because it's two wireless for $72. That's $36 a wireless. So with this one, you get the receiver, two wireless microphones, power supply, a quarter inch cable, which I'll show you why here in a minute. And then these to keep the devices from rolling, which I only really find useful when I'm shooting YouTube videos. I don't really ever use these live. So you plug in the power in the back and then you can either do individual outputs for channel one and channel two via XLR, or you can send them both out the same channel with this mix out. And that's why they provided this cable. If you need XLR, you'll need your own cables for it. But it's very, very simple to use. So hit the power button and you can see you have volume control on each of the two different channels so it goes from 0 to 15 and you can also change the channel that the wireless is transmitting on so on channel a you can push the set button and then scroll up and down through the hundred different channel options that it has it starts from 550 and goes all the way up to 574.750 megahertz and you can do the same thing on the other one and this one goes from 575 all the way up to 5 599.750 megahertz. So for the microphones, they take two AA batteries. These are a very snug fit. It does take a little bit to fit the batteries in there, but it does fit. Definitely very snug. Turn it on and you can see the channel that it's on as well as the battery life. And when I talk into the microphone, you can see the meter of how strong it's going. However, if you need to change channels, so let's say I'm going to change a channel. I'm going to set it to channel nine. I'm going to take off this cover on the mic. See the infrared port right here? I'm going to push set and then set again. Once I've set the channel, you'll see the infrared light is blinking. Just put the wireless mic in front of it and it will set it to that channel. And now you can see that they are set to the same channel. And you can do the same thing for the second mic as well. All the controls are the same. Testing the mic, check one, two. Testing the mic, mic check one, two. Here is how the microphone sounds. So when I first heard this one and I did a tone test, I was like, oh, that's not my favorite sounding mic. The thing was, is that I brought it to a show. I try to test out as much of my gear that I review on this channel. I test it out live before doing a review on it. The compression and crispiness of that microphone actually sounded really good into my ears. I could hear myself really well, kind of made it cut through above everything else. That's one of the things about tone is that when I heard it by itself, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this one. I also understood that it was a $72 dual wireless microphone system. In my opinion, the thing about tone is that you always have to hear it in the context of what you're doing. The main issue that I ran into with it is that there is some sort of limiter that you would hit with it. So anytime I would do lead vocals and I got right up on the microphone, that's when it would kind of cut out like there was a gate or something that I was hitting. But it only did that when I was doing loud parts when I was singing lead. It never happened when I did harmonies or backing vocals, so it sounds like there's just a limiter on that. Is this a super high-end, professional-sounding microphone? No. Was I able to successfully play a gig with it and people had a good time? Yes. Okay, next up is a wireless XLR adapter that can be used to turn any microphone into a wireless microphone, or it can also be used to run a wireless signal from your mixer to your PA speaker, for example. So here's the adapters right here, and they do give you this dual USB-C cable for charging because it has a built-in battery. Also, something really cool that they give you is they give you these adapters so that you can turn these into quarter-inch adapters, especially if you're using for a PA system or something like that, and the mixer that you're using only has quarter-inch outputs. 
So I'm gonna power the devices on and adjust my camera settings so it doesn't blink like that. And you can see a few things. You can see the frequency that it's on, the volume that it's on, the battery life, as well as the RF signal strength. So I'm gonna plug this into a microphone and then the other one into my mixer, or I could also plug the transmitter into the output of my mixer and then run the receiver to my PA speaker, for example. As you can see, as I tap the microphone, you can see the signal on the receiver, but I am able to adjust the volume by pushing the power button just once. You'll see volume starts blinking. I can turn it up or turn it down based on my needs. And also, in addition to that, I can push the power button again. I can either set it to mic level, line level. It says music, but that's, that's line level. And I can also do 48 volts phantom power to a microphone as well. Very cool that you have all three of those options in here, especially for something that's affordable. If you don't know the difference between mic and line level. I do have a video going over that if you're interested. This is the only thing I don't really like about it. This is a little bit goofy in the way that you change channels. You have to power it on while you're holding the minus button when it's powered up and let go and then start cycling through the channels. So I'm gonna set it to a different channel and you'll see that it's going into sync mode right now and watch on the receiver, see it changed channels on the receiver. So I don't have to go and change it on the receiver. It'll automatically send that change and it charges over USB-C, which again, they include the cable for you. Testing the XLR adapter on an SM58 microphone. This is how the XLR adapter sounds. I also gigged with this one and it worked really well. So again, the only downside I see about this is how to change channels, but it is very nice that it does send that new channel to the receiver itself. Next up, we have a portable mixer that has two wireless microphones built into the mixer itself. Here is the mixer that acts as the receiver for the wireless. Here are the two wireless microphones. You get the optional rolling rings. You also get the optional foam pieces, which are nice, especially if you're doing speeches for these. And you also get this 3.5 millimeter to RCA. It is powered with USB-C, which is really nice because that means I can power it with something like this portable power bank right here. And this can be a portable rig. So let's go over the wireless stuff first. They take two AA batteries, power it on. You can see what frequency it's on as well as a battery indicator. You are able to change the frequency by opening up the cover and pushing the button underneath here. And you can see it changes the channel and that will automatically send that to the receiver as well. What I like about this is that you can see that wireless A is currently on because the A light is on. If I turn on the B wireless as well, you can see that the B light is on. Do keep in mind, this only works on channel strip two. So watch when I tap microphone one, you can see the indicator light right here on channel two. And when I tap on the second mic, it also is on channel two. So the wireless only go into channel two. It would be nice if the first wireless went into input one and the second one went into input two. So you had separate control over them, but they only go into channel two. Of course, you can also just not use the wireless at all. Push this mic on button and now the wireless doesn't work. And now you just have an analog input for XLR or quarter inch. So going over the mixer for these first two strips, you got basically the same thing. XLR or quarter inch inputs. You have a pad right here to turn down the input signal on channel one. You can also turn on phantom power with this right here. Each of them have a gain adjustment, three band EQ with these sliders. You can add some effects and of course the master level output. You also do get one more channel, which you can either use with this 3.5 millimeter aux in or the RCA in up here. And you have level control for that right here. You do have quarter inch outputs and you have that main level output right here. You also do get a phones output right here. This is tied to the main level so you have to turn up the main level in order to get the headphones to work. I do wish it was independent as well. But one of the things that I like a lot about this is that you can either plug in, you know, a USB-A drive or something like that and play MP3s from here. But one of the things that I really like is I can push this mode button and it's now in Bluetooth. So you can see my phone found it. I'm going to pair to it. And now I can play music from here and it streams via Bluetooth. But what I really like is that I can push this next button right here and it'll go to the next song. I can also pause the music play the music, go to the previous song, and so on and so forth, all from the mixer. That's a nice touch for sure. And you get control over that level right here. And you also have this switch to say if you want to route that to the main output or not. Microphone check, check one, two, testing the mic. This is how the microphone sounds.
I personally haven't used this one live yet, but the thing I think that this one would be really good for is like wedding DJs or something like that. It's winter time right now, so I don't have any wedding gigs coming up, but I definitely think this is very usable in that situation. All right, next up, we have three different wireless guitar systems. The first one is going to be a $12 wireless guitar system, which is crazy to say, going all the way up to the highest price, which is $48. Here are those three systems. And if you are finding this video helpful, do me a favor and hit the thumbs up button. It truly does help out the channel and feed the YouTube algorithm them gods. So here's the wireless right here. This one's your transmitter. This one's your receiver. Turn them on with the switch on the side. They've automatically connected and you're ready to go. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Plug this one into your guitar. Plug this one into your amp or your first pedal or your audio interface, wherever you're trying to send the signal to, and you're ready to go. This charges over micro USB and it does include the cable that you need for charging it. That's about as easy as it gets. But how's it sound? Here's a tone test. <laughs> This is the next level up. It's by MVave. This one transmits on 5.8 gigahertz, which is more reliable than the other one, which transmits on 2.4 gigahertz. And they include this little pouch for carrying it around, which is just a nice little touch as well. This one is also really nice because the tip swivels, so you can have it so it's not sticking out of the guitar. But this one is quite easy to turn it on. You can see what channel they're on. So right now they're on channel four. I do have to change both of them manually. So on the transmitter, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna hold the button so that it changes to channel one or channel two or channel three. And you can see that the receiver is blinking saying that it has not found a transmitter yet. So I'm gonna do the same thing over here, push the button until it goes over to three and now they are paired. And again, this one charges over USB-C and the cable is included. But how's it sound? Here's a tone test. <laughs> Next up, we have the Swift Audio. If you've seen my channel before, this is the one I recommend the most to people for a cheap wireless system. I have a dedicated video and review on it, and this is the cheapest that I have seen it. Power them on back here, they're paired, and they're ready to go. The thing that's really nice about this one is that you can push the button on the transmitter, it will change the channel, and it will change the channel on the receiver itself. So if you need to change channels, push the button once on the transmitter, and you will be on a new channel, and it will send that info over to the receiver. Very cool. You also do get more channels with this one. And I checked this out with my RF Explorer. So you can see this first one is on 906. And then when I push the button, switches up to 908 and then basically 910. So it just keeps moving up, but there are 10 different channels that it operates on. So you get 10 channels with this one. And this one operates within the 900 frequency region. This one is also battery powered and it is powered over micro USB and they provide the cable. I would like to see them eventually upgrade to USB-C as well. But how's it sound? Here's a tone test. So these cheap wireless systems I've reviewed and used live countless times. I've done so many different videos on them. Here's some video footage of me and my wife playing music in the Bahamas using the Swift Audio One. The best video of mine that I highly recommend that you watch is what is the best cheap wireless part three. I go over a lot of valuable info of how to use and what to plan to do with these cheap wireless systems. The biggest piece of advice that I have for you is because they're so affordable to get two different systems. Get one, for example, like this one, which is in the 900 megahertz, and then get the MVave one, which is in 5.8 gigahertz. If you get to a venue and for example, 5.8 is crowded, it doesn't make sense to switch to another 5.8 gigahertz system. But if you switch to something on 900, you're much more likely to have it to work. And part of the reason that I bring this up is because one of the giveaways I'm going to do, I'm going to give away all three of the wireless guitar systems to one of my subscribers. So be sure to stick around to the end. We have one more item to go over, and that's a cheap two button wireless MIDI foot controller. If you are unfamiliar with MIDI, I highly recommend that you watch my beginner's guide to MIDI programming, and then a lot more of this will make sense.
So here's the wireless foot controller. Up here on the top, you have two different modes you can actually load this in, which is nice. You have a TRS connection and a USB-C connection for charging the device. And you can also connect this to your tablet or computer and use it as a wired controller. And the thing that I like about this is how programmable it is with the app. So you wanna download the app Cube Suite, which you can see I have here. I'm gonna hit scan nearby devices and it found it. And now I can start programming it. So I'm gonna go down to custom control. So I'm gonna set the MIDI channel. So let's say I'm going to set it to MIDI channel 5. And then what do I want the first button to do? I'm going to choose which MIDI CC command I want to send. So I'm going to set the first one to send MIDI CC 70 and the second button to send MIDI CC 71. And now I'm going to go into Stage Tracks 3, which is the app that I use for live performances. And I'm going to assign this first button to go to the previous song and this second button here to scroll down a full page. If you're curious on Stage Tracks and how to program MIDI in Stage Tracks, I have a video about that. That's not what this video is about, but I'm just showing you that you can use this to send MIDI commands to your devices. So you can see when I push the second button, you'll see that it scrolls down on the lyrics. And when I push this previous button, you can see it's cycling through the song selections on the left. MVAVE also makes a four button version that I've actually been using live. And that one I actually already reviewed in my previous Temu review video. So you have an option for a two button one or a four button one, depending on how many MIDI buttons you need. So I truly do believe that all of this stuff is able to be used in a live environment. It just depends on the situation. I'm gonna give you four things just to remember when you're using budget-friendly wireless like this. First off, don't use too much cheap wireless all at once. The more wireless that you use at once, the more money you usually have to spend. Next tip, make sure you don't have a bunch of wireless all in a rack together or all congested and really close together. Third, if you're using any wireless on 2.4 gigahertz or 5.8 gigahertz, make sure it's at least 10 feet away from a Wi-Fi router. And then fourth, line of sight from the transmitter to the receiver is always best. This is true for any wireless, cheap to high-end stuff. So like I mentioned on my channel, I review budget-friendly stuff and I also review higher-end stuff as well. There's a market out there for both and I try to review both on my channel. If you're on a budget and looking for what is some of the best budget-friendly stuff, hopefully this video has helped you out to make that decision to see if this is something that's right for you. Again, many thanks to Tamu for sponsoring this video, and you can check out the links down below in the description. But like I mentioned, I am going to be doing a giveaway for my subscribers. So what am I going to give away? All eight products I'm actually going to give away to you guys. I am very blessed that I have a lot of wireless gear already. I personally would rather give it back to you guys because of how much the channel's grown over the last couple of years. I'm truly grateful for it, and I try to give back to you guys as often as I can. So in order to win two things, first of all, you have to be a subscriber. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And then second, you have to leave a comment below in this video, and you have to use the magic phrase. You can say whatever you want down below in the comment section. The only thing is you have to say one of the three magic phrases. So we're using all back to the future terms for this magic phrase. If you want all three wireless guitar systems, the magic phrase is great Scott. Next up, if you want the mixer with the two wireless built into it and the XLR adapter, the magic phrase is this is heavy. And next up, if you want the dual wireless microphone system and the MIDI foot switch, the magic phrase is 1.21 gigawatts. Why can't I say that? I've seen that movie a billion times. You have to choose one of those three that you want to win. You can't choose all three of them, just choose one of them, and then you'll be entered to win. One other twist with this one is I am going to do the drawing in 24 hours after this video comes out, so I will announce the winner on this date right here. Please remember, do not respond to scammers. I will never, ever, ever ask you for money, period. I'm not going to message you and say, oh, you owe me for shipping. None of that. Scammers sometimes will show up when I do giveaways. I will never ask you for money, period. Please do not respond to scammers. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to check out my first video that I did on different products I found on Tamu as well. If you're watching this in the future and the in-ear monitor video is out, I'll post that on the end screen as well. If not, it'll go to one of my other videos. But you can check out both of those videos by clicking the links on your screen now. Thank you guys again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.